Hello, I'm Dave Hart. I'm the preacher for the Winslow, Arizona Church of Christ, and I'm so glad that you've chosen to join me today. Today we're going to take a look at a sermon entitled, Seeking God, Seeking God. You know, God wants us to seek him, and as I was um, working on this sermon this week, I was actually very surprised how many places are in the Bible where it tells us to seek God, it tells us to seek God. And you know, just the, uh, that God wants us to seek him defeats the whole belief of Calvinism, doesn't it? You know, Calvinism, which so many of our denominations believe and teach, teach that we're born either saved or we're lost. Well, if we're born saved, we don't need to seek him, do we? We've already found him. But um, if we're born lost, it wouldn't do us any good to seek him, would it? Because we couldn't be saved even if we would find him. So, so this whole idea, the whole concept of seeking God defeats the concept of, of Calvinism totally, totally. So how do we seek God? I mean, it's not like playing a game of hide and seek or peekaboo or, or something like that. How is it that we seek God? Well, I have a list of some of the ways, some of the ways that we seek God. And it would include such things as reading the Bible. We can't, we can't find God if we don't know who God is. And we can't know who God is if we don't read the Bible. So it has to start with reading the Bible. We need to read the Bible, to be able to find him, to be able to have a relationship with him, to be able to know what it is that he wants from us and doesn't want from us. So it starts with reading the Bible, and all of us Christians need to make a habit of reading and studying the Bible, reading and studying God's word and doing it as much as we possibly, possibly can. So it starts with reading the Bible, but then we have to go beyond that. We have to obey the Bible. We have to obey the Bible. So you can read the Bible and not obey it, but you're not really seeking God that way, are you? Because to seek God, we have to read the Bible, and then we have to obey what it says. We have to do what it says. To seek God, we, we, we need to learn to understand the Bible. I know a lot of people that will read the Bible and they will not understand what it's really saying. And, and a lot of times it's because they're not making the effort. They're not making the effort. And listen, most of the Bible is very easy to understand. Some of it's kind of hard. Some of it's very hard. And some of it you have to really work at. It. Some of it takes some time. And I understand that. But we need to, to seek God by reading the Bible by obeying the Bible, and by seeking to increase our knowledge of the Bible. And of course, we have to believe the Bible. We have to have faith. To seek God means that we have to have faith. We have to have faith that what the Bible says is absolutely true. Not some of it, not most of it, not part of it, not the parts that we like, but everything in the Bible, everything. We have to believe everything in the Bible. And I know of, of some people who, who will believe some parts and won't believe the other or think that, um, uh, you know, the Gospels are more important than the letters, various things like that. No, all of the Bible is important and all of it must believe, be believed and believed in the right context, in the right context. We seek God by praying. You know, God talks to us through the Word of God. And we talk to God by praying. We talk to God by praying. So we seek God when we pray. Trusting God. We need to trust God. We need to trust that, that God knows better than we do, knows more than we do, and that everything that he says is absolutely true, and we can trust in 100%. Listen, um, the older I get, the less trust I have in man. And you can look at a lot of areas like that, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll just tell you one easy area. Politicians, we're getting ready to have an election here in just a few weeks, and, and, uh, and I hope that you'll all be good Americans and good Christians when you go to vote and vote for the, um, the person that's going to... I, you know, I wish we could say that we had Christian politicians, brothers and sisters in the church that are that are going to be voted on them. Most of them are not. So, so we need to kind of look at it and see, are these people going to be for Christian principles? 
And of course, even then, they can tell us they are, right? And, and then do just the opposite. So my, my trust in man is quite low, to be honest, but my trust in God is quite high. When God says it, he means it, and it will be done. Man can say things to fool others. Man can say things just to get what they want. Or sometimes man can say things and thinking at the time that he's going to be able to do it, but then providentially for some reason he is not able to do what he has promised or he has said. When we have, when we have this, when we find God and we know who God is, we know what he says he will do. And nothing will prevent that. Nothing can prevent that. We seek God in the way that we live our lives. We live in a sacrificial life for God. When we find God, we, we, we desire, we have a desire to sacrifice for him, to sacrifice our time, energy, effort, and resources for him. And, and, you know, we can kind of look at that as, as a gauge. If I have found God, then I am, I am willing to live a sacrificial life. Are you living a sacrificial life for him? We find God when we meditate on his word. We need to think about his word. Listen, there's a lot of books that I've read throughout my life. I grew up reading comic books and the Hardy Boys and science fiction books and and all kinds of different books. And um, the fact is, sometimes I'll think about those books, but I really don't meditate on them. The Word of God is to be different. We, we are to read the Word of God and we are to think about those things. Think about what God is saying. Think about those passages. Memorize passages. Listen, I'm really bad when it comes to memorizing um, exact things, exact passages. You could ask me about something in the Bible. Most of the time I can tell you, yeah, you know, there's something in the Bible about that. And I can tell you about that. But, but, but the exact passage is hard for me, but it's good to memorize. It's good to memorize. So we need to meditate and, 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 and think on God's word. It helps us to find him. Working for God, we need to do works. Listen, it, it amazes me how much the denominational world um, thinks that works don't matter, that works aren't important, that you don't have to do works as a Christian. And that's not true at all. And, and, and I'm not saying we work our way to heaven. We know that. Can't do enough works by themselves, of themselves, of us to get into heaven. We know that. But you also can't get there without work because that is part of our faith because faith is an action word. We have to put our faith into action, which means we're going to have work. So we, we find God by doing the works that God would have us to do. And of course, we seek God by worshiping him, by worshiping him. Listen, when we worship God, it's, it's, it's holy ground. Remember Moses, when Moses was on the mountain and and, and there was the burning bush in which, which um, God was at, and, and he told him to take off his shoes, you're on holy ground. We have to remember what worship is. It is holy ground. It's not entertainment. It's not, it's not the, the, the moose social club or, 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 um, or anything like that. It's holy ground where we seek God to worship him. And we need to remember that. We need to remember that in our hearts and mind and spirits. Now, we come to worship. It is to seek God, to honor God, to bow down before God. And it's all about him and none about us. Oh, how so many people want to make worship about themselves. Well, you know, I know God said to sing, but I think it'd be better if we added the instrument or, or instead of preaching, how about a dramatic play or, 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 or whatever, you know, there's churches out there that have um, dancing girls and dances in the spirits and fog machines and, and all kinds of stuff. And what's it for? Is it to worship God? Did God ask for those things? Is that, is that how we see people worshiping in the New Testament? 
Is that the instructions you've been given? No. These are things that men want to stir up their, their, their carnal emotions, not their spiritual emotions. So we seek God and we worship God and we worship him the way that he asked us to. So let's look at some Bible verses. Let's look at some Bible verses today that talk about seeking God, seeking God. And let's start with Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. With all your heart. we got to put some effort in this. We have to seek God with all of our heart, not half-heartedly. Not, you know, um, uh, as kind of a side note to our lives. Listen, I've had before people, especially young people, they'll come to church with their boyfriend or girlfriend. Most of the time it's a boyfriend for some reason. That's not a member of the church and they'll, they'll um, want the boy to become a Christian and they'll really push on the boy and, 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 and sometimes the boy will go ahead and get baptized or whatever. But the problem is that sometimes when that happens, the boy is seeking the girl more than he's seeking God. Oh, a lot of times they'll have some interest in church, but that's because they're interested in the girl. It's kind of how it works, isn't it? The guy's interested in a girl, and a girl's a Christian, so he's going to go to church to placate her, and, and she really wants him to get baptized, and he knows that that'll make her happy. And, and um, you know, there again, the boy might be seeking God, you know, to some point, but he's not seeking him with his whole heart. He's seeking the girl with his whole heart. We have to seek God. We'll find God when we seek him with our whole heart. Of our whole heart, I also see the scenario at times where the person gets into trouble. They get into trouble and, and, and they come seeking God or they come seeking help from God's people. Come seeking help from God or from God's people. And there again, why are they, why are they seeking God? Well, you know, part of it, they, they are, I believe, seeking God. But, but more than that, they're, 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 they want God to get them out of the trouble. They want God's people to help them get out of their trouble. And it's not, it's not a case where it's the whole heart. Now, I'm not telling you that you can, can know this. We can't know another person's heart. But we can understand that these things happen. And, and a lot of times um, down the road, you can kind of tell what's going on with a person's heart because of their action. Not you can see the heart, but you can sort of see the action and make a judgment based upon those actions. So we need to seek God with everything that we have. And, and I want to ask you today, I want to challenge you today. How much are you seeking God? How much are you seeking God? Have you got comfortable? It's a God doesn't want you to get comfortable. He wants you to keep seeking and keep seeking and keep seeking. How comfortable are you in your, in your Christian routine, in your religion? Are you, are you, are you satisfied with where you're at? Because you shouldn't be. We need to seek and we need to keep seeking. And we need to grow in our seeking of the Lord of our own heart. And if it's for our whole heart, if it's for our whole heart, we are never going to stop seeking. We're never going to. Uh, 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 we're going to continue to seek and continue to seek even more as we grow in Christ. So let's look at another passage about seeking God. Wonderful passage. Wonderful passage. Matthew six thirty one through thirty four. Matthew six thirty one through thirty four. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble." What comforting words, but also what challenging words, what challenging words. God tells us again here to seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, to seek these things. 
And he's telling us that we don't have to worry about the physical things. Now, is he telling us we don't have to do our part? No, God is not telling us that. He's not telling us that we can just sit back in the easy chair and the money's going to come flowing in and there's not going to be any problems or issues or anything like that. No, he's not telling us that. Because we know to seek God in his righteousness and his kingdom means to do what God says. And God says, if you don't work, you don't eat, right? You got to do what you can do. And you do what you can do, and then you trust God for the rest. You do what you can do, and then you trust God for the rest. And how comforting is that? And let me ask you something. When you get into trouble, when, 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 when it gets hard, when it gets dirty, when it gets nasty, when, when the problems come, when the struggles come, do you turn to God first or you try to go out there and fix it yourself? See, God tells us to seek him first, to seek him first, to turn to him first. I don't know how many times in my life when the hard times, when the struggles have happened, I've hit the panic button and I get worried and concerned and scared and afraid. And a lot of times I'll go out and I'll just make things worse. I'll just go out and make things worse. And the things are already bad. I go out and make things worse. And then it gets so bad, I, I finally decide, oh, maybe I should pray about this. Maybe I should look to God and, 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 and trust in God and hope in God and, 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 and be sure I'm doing things the way that God would want me to do. And what about the trust that he'll take care of you? I know for me there again, when some things go wrong, when the financial problems hit, things like that, I start thinking, oh no, am I going to be able to pay my bills? Am I going to be able to eat? Am I going to be able to take care of myself and take care of my loved ones? And you know, so far, I've never gone hungry. So far, at least that I can remember right now, I've never missed a meal. God has always provided one way or another. And there's been some times in my life that I've um, had some real struggles and I didn't see a way out. And, and now, looking back on those things, they're way past me, way back in the, in the rearview mirror. And I, I don't even know how God got me through those times and got me out of them, but he did. So... When things get hard, when things get tough, we need to seek God. We need to depend on Him. Now, that shouldn't be the only time. You, like me, probably know people out there that pretty much the only time they seek God, the only time they go out to try to find God, is when things get tough. And when things get better, well, they're, 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 they're back off doing what they want to do. I remember a relative of mine that that uh, many years ago now, she, um, she told God that if he would allow her to have a child, that she would quit smoking. So she quit smoking, and the Lord providentially allowed her to have a child. And then she, she took up smoking again, and she ended up dying of cancer. So, so listen... We need to trust God in all areas of our lives. And we need to keep that trust up. We need to keep that faithfulness up. Even after God gets us through whatever he gets us through. And we see this in the Bible. We see it in Old Testament, char Old Testament characters. How many times did God get David through hard times, through struggles, through, through difficult times in life? But yet David wasn't a perfect person, was he? God put him in very powerful positions in life. And David was thankful for that, but David also forgot to stay faithful at times to God and did some very terrible and awful things. So we need to remember God in the good times. We need to remember God in the bad times. And when God gets us through bad times, we need to keep remembering him and we need to keep seeking him. 
Psalms 27, verse 8. Psalms 27, verse 8 says, When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. So we seek God because God tells us to. We seek God because God directly tells us to. And what's wonderful to think about is if we seek God's face here on earth, one day we will see God's face with our own eyes. One day we will seek God's face with our own eyes. We can find him on earth, but, but, but one day it will be face to face. And won't that be wonderful? You know, uh, death is a hard thing. Death is a scary thing. And I don't think any of us like to think about it much, but it's going to happen to us. And it's going to happen to our loved ones, unless the Lord comes back first. But... But it's a scary thing. One of the scary things is we don't know. Of course, the, the atheist, the agnostic, uh, those who are not in the Lord's church, they have a very terrible fate waiting for them, don't they? Uh, a fate that's just unimaginable. And, and, and it's a fate that, that we don't want anybody to go to, to, to be part of. So we try to teach them a way out of that fate. But for us who are Christians, even though death can be scary and it can be um, uh, difficult, at the same time, we know that it's going to be a door that we step through one day into some place that is more wonderful than any place that we can imagine. If we seek God in this world, we find God in this world, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna see him even more clearly in the next world. And think of that door, that door to this life closing, but another door opening and Jesus being there to greet us. How wonderful and how beautiful will that be? And, and when I have somebody close to me who is a Christian die, I think about that. I think about that door opening into another world. But I also think about those who are who die who are going to open also a door into another world, but it's not going to be a wonderful world. It's going to be a terrible world that lasts for all of eternity. I just found out this last week that a uh, a young man who's a friend with my son growing up when they were teenagers, and he was at my house all the time and. And we tried to get him to come to church. We tried to get him, and, but he wouldn't come. He wouldn't come. He wouldn't come. And as far as I know, he never did go. And, and now, you know, a relatively young man, I just heard last week, has passed away into eternity. And, and I think about that. And, and what, what could have I have done better that, that, that I might have brought him to the Lord? And I tried. Others tried. What could have I have done better? And I think about, he was a nice kid and a likable kid. And, and, and now, if, if, if he didn't find the Lord's church, he's in a place of, of absolute terror for all of eternity. And I wish it would have been, and I hope it was, I hope that something happened I didn't know about with him. But if not, he is lost forever and ever and ever, and it makes me sad. I hurt, I ache for him. And I don't want anybody to go there. But he had the opportunity as all of us do. He had more of an opportunity than most actually to seek the Lord. We must seek the Lord. And if we seek the Lord, if we find the Lord, if we seek the Lord, we won't only find him in this life, but he'll be waiting for us in the life to come. Isaiah 55, verse 6. Isaiah 55, verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. See, there can come a time in this life when it's no longer possible to seek the Lord. There can be situations, there can be things that happen that that will be impossible. Sometimes people will harden their hearts so much that they will never be able to truly seek the Lord. 
Now, we don't know who these people are. We need to give everybody the chance because there's always the possibility that even somebody with a very hard heart will turn back to the Lord. But we know it's a fact that some people will harden their heart so much, so much they will never come to the Lord. Some people wait too long until it's too late. I, I posted on my Facebook ministry pages, one of my Facebook ministry pages, Last week, uh, they, uh, uh, and it got a lot of people upset, it got some people mad, but it was the truth. It was the truth. There was a minister, and he got a call to go visit a, a woman and her husband who was in the hospital about, you know, they, they told him the woman was dying, and, and, you know, maybe he could bring her to the Lord before she had died. So the minister got in his car and he drove to the hospital and he, and he found the hospital room and there was her, the, the husband sitting there and there was the wife and the wife was only semi-conscious. Conscience. And, and I've been there, unfortunately, more times than I would, would like being a minister that you go into to a room with somebody and, and they are still alive, but, but they can't talk no longer. They can't respond any longer. They're too far gone. They're too far gone. And that's, that's the way this lady was. She hadn't died yet, but she wasn't able to respond. She wasn't able to talk. She, she was no longer able to communicate. Death had taken too much of a hold of her. And even though she hadn't died completely yet, uh, there wasn't enough left of her mentally to be able to respond, to be able to be saved at that point. And the minister tried talking to her, you know, tried asking her, tried to do what he could, and, and, and she was not able in any way to respond back. And there was nothing the minister could do at that point. She had waited too long. She had waited too long, and, and, and people don't like that. People say, well, maybe she could have waited, or she could have did this, or she could have done that. And, 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 and listen, people, unless you're there at those last few hours of death of some people, you don't understand that they're not capable of that anymore. And the time has passed them on. The passage from Isaiah says, Seek the Lord why he may be found or he may be found. This is one of the reasons we at this church here like to work with the young people so much. Statistics say that 70 to 80 percent of all the people who come to the Lord will come to the Lord before the age of 14. Before the age of 14. In other words, most people who come to the Lord make that decision before the age of 14. Now listen, I'm not saying that old people can't come because they do and I've been able to, to help bring older people to the Lord and, 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 and of course that's wonderful when you bring anybody to the Lord but, but um, you're going to find that you have a lot fewer old people than you do young people coming to the Lord and Something about being away from the Lord year after year after year can just make that heart harder and harder and harder. There again, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, that older people can't come because they do, but I'm just saying the percentage of them coming is, goes down with age. It says, call upon him while he is near. When you start learning about God, when you go into church, when, you, when, 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 when you're nearer to God, when you start seeking God, that's the time to call upon him. Remember, calling upon the Lord is just not calling out, Lord. Calling upon the Lord is obeying the Lord, is obeying what the Lord says to do. Calling on the name of the Lord would, would be... Um, uh, doing the process of salvation, of hearing God's word, of believing God's word, having faith in it, of repenting, of confessing the Lord, being baptized for the remission of your sins and to be put into the Lord's church, and then living a faithful life until, until death or until the Lord comes. 
So we need to seek the Lord. Some people also will say, well, I'll seek the Lord when, when I get older. I want to go out. I want to have my, my good times. I want to have my fun times. And, um, and there's a lot of there's people out there that will put it off. They'll put it off in their teens and 20s because they want to have the good times. And in their 30s and 40s because they're so busy with work and all those things, 50s and 60s and 70s, and they're off vacationing. And, they're, and, and some of these people really, you know, think, hey, I'm going to come back to the Lord. I'm going to come to the Lord at some point when I'm not so busy. And then they die without the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. None of us know if we have another day. None of us know if we have another heartbeat. None of us know if we'll get into a situation that will be impossible. You know, we, we talk about the thief on the cross, talk about the thief on the cross and how the Lord saved him. And of course, that was a special circumstance. That was before the church age. Um, that was when, when Jesus was here on earth in a personal way, um, in a physical way, to be able to um, forgive sins. Today, if a person was put on a cross, minus Jesus, he was put on a cross, he would not be able to be saved from that cross unless he had already been saved, would he? Some people would say, oh, but, but it's never too late. Yes, there is a time that it can be too late. That person can no longer obey the gospel. That person can no longer be baptized. That person's time has passed them by. And I know a lot of people don't like that, but that's what the Bible teaches, and that's why we need to seek God now. That's why we need to seek God while he can be found, because it could come a time when you may not be able to find him anymore. Proverbs 8, verse 17. Proverbs 8, verse 17. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. So God loves those who love him. God loves those who love him. Don't you wish that's the way it was with everybody? You know, I, I remember being a, a young man and, and you know, um, having a crush on a girl and falling in love, sometimes at first sight. And, oh, I just wanted that girl to love me back. But you sure didn't have that guarantee, do you? And in fact, if you go up and, and tell a girl that you just see and you like the way she looks, that you love her, uh, she'd probably think you were quite strange, wouldn't she? And there's been other people in my life that I've wanted them to like me, and uh, many of them have, some of them haven't. Could you imagine that, somebody not liking me? But hey, it, it actually has happened before. And um, uh, with God, we don't have to worry about that. God is waiting for us to love him so that he can love us back, so that he can love us back. And that includes everyone. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter if you've been rejected by people in this world a thousand times. God will not reject you. And the wonderful thing is, the wonderful, wonderful thing is, everybody can find God if, if we seek him. How do we find God? By seeking him. How do we seek him? By those things that we talked about earlier in the sermon. So, God is no respecter of people. God loves everybody equally. God loves everybody that seeks him. Everybody who seeks him, nobody is rejected by him, and everyone, everyone has the capacity to find God. Everyone does. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently, uh, diligently seek him. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. We can't, be, we, we can't please God. We can't be saved. We, we can't be a Christian without faith, without faith. You know, we talk about in Churches of Christ how you must be baptized to, to be a Christian, and, and there's good reason for that. But 
we also believe what the Bible says about faith. We must have faith. Now, it's not faith only, just as it's not baptism only. Not, not that it says about being saved in the scripture. It doesn't say only. No. All these things work together for our salvation, but we must have faith. We must have faith. And it says that um, uh, when we come to God, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligently, se diligently seek him. So if our faith is impossible to please him, we must believe that he is. We must believe in Jesus. We must believe in the scriptures. And we must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So here's a new word, diligently. What does that mean? That means persistently, aggressively, continually seek him. There again, going back to a, to a, to a romantic situation, a man falls in love with a girl and he really loves that girl. And what does he do if he, if he does? Quite often he is going to diligently seek her. He's going to try and, and, and go after her, do things that please her, call her, talk to her, you know, till way in the night. They're going to play those little silly games that we all played. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. And you're going to diligently, diligently. I can remember me being a young man doing that with ladies and just, just, my whole world, my whole focus was seeking that lady out. And I was diligent about it. And that's how we need to be when it comes to God. We need to, if we want the rewards, the promises of God, then we need to diligently, continually, aggressively seek him out. Leviticus 19, verse 31. Leviticus 19, verse 31 we're going to change gears here and look about seeking out other things. Give no regard to mediums and familiar, familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. As, as, as diligently and as strongly as we need to seek out the Lord, there's other things that we need to stay away from. We need to stay away from it. And listen, I, I know of people, um, even in the church, that seek out occult things. Putting their trust in other things other than God. Seeking the wrong advice. Seeking the wrong things. I, I, I knew a, a Christian lady, and, and um, I, I was just shocked to find out that, that she looked at the horoscope every day. Now, I don't know if she did it for a joke, you know, just to see what it would say or if she believed. I, I don't know, but, but you still shouldn't be messing with that stuff. Don't seek out those things, palm readers and crystal balls and all those kind of things. And, and, and of course, all kinds of worldly things. People, instead of seeking God for their peace and for fulfillment, they'll seek out alcohol and drugs and illicit sex and money and, and all kinds of different things. And all those things do is create more hunger and more lust and more desire for evil things to seek out even more evil things. You know, it's like the young man, he gets talked into into drinking that first sip of beer because he wants to be cool and he wants to be around his friends. And, and, and then he goes to harder liquor and one day, one day he gets in his car and he kills a family because he's drunk. And, and it didn't start out that way, did it? It started out one sip of beer. Same thing with somebody out there taking a little marijuana. They go, oh, a little marijuana is not going to hurt me. And, and down the road they're shooting up heroin or, or doing LSD or things like that. Or, um, listen, when we seek out the wrong things, we're going to get in trouble. When we seek out the wrong things, we're not going to have peace and contentment. Oh, you may have it while you're high, but as soon as you're not high, you need to go get high again. And you need to get higher and higher and higher. Listen, I, I knew somebody once that had terrible migraines. Terrible migraines. And, and I'd take them to the hospital and, and they'd give, have to give her sometimes morphine. And, and I remember when... Um, 
Uh, they, they, they first started giving her morphine and it would just knock her out. Just, just knock her out. As time went on, and, and, and listen, she had these terrible, terrible, terrible migraines. And they, they'd give her a, a shot and she wouldn't be knocked out anymore. She'd just be as goofy as all get out. A little while down the road, they'd give her the shot of morphine. And, and, and because they'd given her so much of it, she it wouldn't even affect her anymore. Wouldn't even affect her. So, so if she was taking these drugs to get high, what would she have had to have done? She would have had to take more, more, and more, and more all the time. When we seek God for a whole heart diligently, He gives us peace. He gives us the, the, that inner fulfillment. He gives us a good life. Oh, there's no better life than a life of seeking God. When you're out there seeking money, it's not, there again, it's not going to make you happy. Am I anti-money? No, of course not. Of course not. I think we should do the best that we can to provide for our families, provide for others, and provide for the Lord's church. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm saying keep it in the right place. Keep it in the proper place. I have known people that... Um, not that they needed to, not that they had to, but because they wanted more, they would choose not to come to worship services and work, or they would have to sleep because they're working so hard. These are people that had choices. These are people that were not going to starve to death if they didn't. They just, they wanted more. And the more they got, the more they wanted no, don't seek out mediums and spiritualists and all that kind of stuff, which is of the devil. Don't seek out things that are not wrong in themselves, but can become wrong when we put them in the place of God and we seek those things above God. Don't seek those things that are sinful and ungodly because they're just going to lead. They're going to lead to hell is what they're going to lead to, but they're also going to lead quite often to some very bad things on this earth. Seek God. Seek Him first. Seek Him most. Oh, that can be hard, folks. That can be hard because, because I always like to look at it as a target. And, and, and what's in the center of that target is the center of your life. And think about your life today. What is in the center of your life? Is it you? Is it your husband, your wife, kids, relationships, uh, your hobbies, some sinful activity, money? What is in the center of your life? What is that thing that you are seeking the most? And if it's anything else but God, you have God outside the center of that circle, you have things messed up. You, you, you got a problem here. You need to put God in the center. You need to seek God first. And if you do that, all these other things will take their proper, proper place. The sinful things will be off the target board. And your relationships will have the right order, the right order. Listen, I've done a lot of marriage counseling over my, over my um, time as a minister, even before that, actually. But... Um, uh, I've seen cases where the husband or the wife will put the other one as the center of their life. And that may sound good, but the pressure it puts on the other one, the expectations that it puts on and the codependency that happens almost always breaks and wrecks the marriage. Almost always breaks and wrecks the marriage. But when you put God in the center and then your husband and wife after that, you have the proper order. And I have seen marriages in the church like that, and what wonderful, beautiful marriages they are. They'll last the 40, 50, 60, even more years. What are you seeking? Seek God, seek Him first, seek Him with all of your heart, seek Him diligently. Psalm 63, verse 1. Psalm 63, verse 1. O oh God, you are my God. Early I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Listen to the passion. Listen to the passion. 
seek him like, a, like you're in a dry and thirsty land. You ever been really, I mean, really, really thirsty? I think the, 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 the most thirsty I've ever been is when I was playing um, football. I played football in Northern California and it gets very hot there, you know, in the 120s and you're out there, out there playing and practicing football and you got all those pads on and you got your helmet on and sweat is everywhere and you are so thirsty and finally the coach says to go get some water and, and, and you line up by that drinking fountain and you're just so thirsty there's only so much time and you just want the person to hurry up and you finally get there and you just want to stay there but you know you can't because there's other guys behind you but you just you just suck that water in as much as you can because you just desire it and you're so thirsty and that's how thirsty and passionate we need to be for seeking God says, early I will seek you. Passage says, early I will seek you. What, is, what does that mean? Well, I believe that early means when you're young. We seek God when you're young and keep seeking him. I was seeking God when I was young, but then there was a time when I didn't, and oh, that was a terrible time, and I made so many mistakes, and I wish that I hadn't done that. I wish I would have kept that passion up to seek him all my life. Seek him early, I believe that means seek him early in the morning when you, when, when you wake up in the morning. From the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, seek God, seek God. Long for God. It says, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. We need to, to, to long for God. And there again, it says, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. And that means... Or when, when, when you get as thirsty as I was playing football, that, that water just becomes obsessive. That's all you want. That's all you want. That's all you desire. You want that water. You need the living water, which is Jesus Christ. And we need to seek him with passion each and every day. And if you're not doing that, please... And if you've done that in the past, but you're not doing it like you, like you need to be doing it, please. And maybe you've been a Christian. Maybe, you know, sometimes, sometimes this happens as people brought up in the church. They've been brought up in the church and they seek God and they, they grow up in the church and they stay in the church and they seek God, but, but they're not seeking Him of passion. Sometimes when somebody comes into the church and they've been into drugs or alcohol and a sinful, terrible life, and they, they come to the Lord, they have such passion to seek the Lord. And unfortunately, some of us have been a Christian a long time and kind of, kind of quench that passion right away and try to bring them down to our level. And we should be coming up to their level. We need to seek him like we need water so bad, but there's no water, but we want it, we need it, we got to have it, so we're going to seek it. No matter what the cost, no matter what it cost us, we're going to seek God with passion of our whole heart and diligently. Folks, if you're not a Christian today, I've already really went over this, but I'm going to go over it again. If you're not a Christian today, if, if, you, if you haven't, um, believed and had faith in the Word of God, heard the Word of God. If you haven't repented, turned from your sins, if you haven't confessed the Lord as the Son of God, if you haven't put on the Lord in baptism for the remission of your sins, please don't hesitate. Please find a church of Christ in your area. Go visit them. Go talk with them. They will help you. They will help you to seek God. And if you're using this video today, maybe you're a shut-in or, or, or providentially not able to be at a worship service. Please don't forget the other acts of worship. This, of course, is your sermon. But don't forget to pray to the Lord, to have the Lord's Supper, to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs unto the Lord, and to give your means to the Lord's Church. I want to thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please share it with others. And I hope God blesses you all this week. God bless you, and thank you for watching.